We're here to idea everyone, to fire up your curiosity and connect you with the people and ideas that shape our world. Watch, listen, understand, connect, create. Let's move the human story forward together. Hello, my name is Pia Puolakka. I'm a forensic psychologist and psychotherapist. I have just authored a book which looks at narcissism, how it damages individuals' lives and society. In this book, I have written about the importance of early detection and provide ways in which to tackle it. Today, I will tell you more about this phenomenon. The word narcissism originally meant self-esteem. Today, it means a person who is self-centered and doesn't take other people into consideration or even exploits and abuses them. Narcissism as a personality threat is a continuum and only extreme forms of narcissism lead to a diagnosis of narcissistic personality disorder. The worst form of narcissism, psychopathy, includes not only self-centeredness and exploitative behavior, but also emotional coldness. Many criminals have psychopathic and narcissistic traits. The roots of narcissism are in the early childhood, low self-esteem, early attachment and relationships. A narcissistically damaged child is unable to form a realistic picture of oneself, other people and the environment, the world one is living in. Narcissists' core self-esteem is low, but they seek to compensate those core feelings of inadequacy by seeking to appear superior to others and requiring privileges that wouldn't be allowed to others. Narcissist way of regulating their own low self-esteem is to belittle and abuse others, to elevate their own selves of self. Often you can find many close ones, relatives or co-workers feeling bad around the narcissist, but the narcissist himself is unable to see anything wrong with his behavior. Narcissists often have weak self-regulation. There is a phenomenon known as narcissistic rage, which is expressed by the narcissist when things don't go the way he wants, or something threatens to break the narcissist's image of himself as perfect and superior. Narcissists are especially interested in seeking power because it feeds to their feeling of superiority and gives them control of people and things the way they want to. On a small scale, the mundane, yet very destructive influence of this power can be seen in relationships, workplaces, or religious communities. Narcissists are good at manipulating and raising people against, against each other, but behind all this is the narcissist's own purpose of gaining an advantage for themselves and things going the way they want. Narcissists have the ability to destroy another person's self-esteem and mental health in a fundamental way. And thanks to their skills and people's unconsciousness of this phenomenon, also not to get caught up in all this. The narcissist often seems superficially pleasant and credible person. They are good at making things look the way they want them to look. The only way to deal with a narcissist is to distance yourself mentally and literally physically, if you can, and keep your mental and physical boundaries. One must not succumb to the provocation of a narcissist and defeat him only with mere facts. For the narcissist is a master at spreading lies and a modified truth that is good for him but harmful to others. Bringing a narcissistic and psychopathic person to power in any community or society is usually the starting point for the slow destruction of that community or society. In this process, victims are all who have come to believe in and even support the narcissist agenda. 
Unfortunately, narcissists often find it difficult to hold themselves responsible for their actions. And narcissists' victims are left without support. Treating narcissism with therapy, for example, is also difficult because narcissists often do not want to take responsibility for their behavior, but blame others, namely their victims. The key is to change a narcissist would be in treating the deep and early schemas of self and other people, and thereby finding new ways of coping, which requires long-term therapy. And from the narcissist side, commitment and motivation, which they usually lack. In a relationship with a narcissist, the other person should never try to heal the narcissist. The only way to survive with the narcissist is to keep him as far away as possible. Avoid provoking interaction and refuse to give in psychologically to the narcissist. The best solution would be to exclude the narcissist completely from one's life. Early identification of the narcissist is important so that coping measures can be put in place before the narcissist inflicts any physical, psychological, sexual, economical or even spiritual damage. Thank you for listening. Let's move the human story forward together.